In today's video, I'm going to be talking about sleep. The one thing that I've been constantly researching about in terms of how to sleep faster, how to sleep better. As a mom of two, sleep is life. So if this is something you're interested in, then keep on watching. My name is Jeannie Ages, your self-care coach. This is the channel dedicated to prioritizing self-care in all aspects of our life so that we can be the best version of ourselves. I really wanted to do a video on sleep because sleep has been the number one thing that I have not been getting a lot lately. So I really wanted to make sure that I researched some tips that I can incorporate in my life that I've been trying out so that I can sleep faster and better. And as you know, sleep is so important in terms of our productivity, efficiency. We generally feel happier if we are fully rested. So without further ado, I really want to share with you guys tip number one. So keep on watching. Number one is to put ourselves on a sleep schedule. As a mom of two, I've actually sleep trained both of my babies to have the same bedtime, nap times, and also to wake up the same time each day. So it's no wonder the same would also apply to us adults as well. Our circadian rhythm functions in a loop, so to align with the sunset and the sunrise. So by putting ourselves on a consistent schedule, it really helps to aid the quality of our sleep. In our household, we actually go upstairs around the same time every single day after our dinner and that we've cleaned up. So that by the time we put our babies to bed, we mentally prepare ourselves to sleep by doing something that is relaxing for my husband and I. And then we generally end up falling around the same time to sleep. Now for myself, it's a bit irregular some nights because with having a young baby, who can have teething or uh, being sick, that could really make him wake up in the middle of the night, which then my sleep gets interrupted. But the key for me is to make sure that even though I had a night that was really irregular, I try to put myself back on the same schedule the next day so that I'm not changing my sleep pattern and that it stays consistent. Now, each morning, we always have our alarm clock set to about 4.45. I know it's really early, but it really works for my household. So by the end of it, we actually ended up not even needing our alarm clocks because our internal alarm clock ended up waking up for us too. So if you guys put yourself on the same schedule every single day and to try to be consistent, you'll start to notice that you won't need an alarm clock either. Number two is to decrease the amount of blue light that we're exposed to in the evening. In the day, it is completely normal and actually beneficial to have blue light. But in the evening, it actually has the opposite effect because it tricks our brain into thinking that it's daytime and that we need to be awake. So there are actually a few things that you can do to block blue light. I am an Android user, so there is an option on my phone to turn on a blue light filter to help block it. But if you don't have that, then there are apps that you can download onto your smartphone device like a laptop and that will help block blue light as well. Or there are glasses that you can purchase to block uh, all blue light that you're exposed to. Or another option would be that two hours before bed, not to have any screen time, any our phones, laptops, or TV, and that will help you in terms of falling asleep a lot faster. Now, my husband and I actually love watching a movie when our babies go to bed. It's actually our only time to unwind and have any amount of screen time, but we are really trying to, even an hour before, trying to fall asleep to a podcast or something that we could listen to versus watching. We still need some sort of noise in the background to fall asleep. We're not the type to sleep when it's like really quiet. So by having something that we can listen to, something motivational perhaps, something on YouTube and have my headphones in and sleep like that. That way we get to fall asleep to something that we enjoy listening to, having it not disrupt our sleep. Number three is to stop consuming caffeine late in the day. For most of us, caffeine has so many benefits such as helping us enhance our focus, gives us that boost of energy and helps increase our physical performance. In my video here, I talk about how I start each day with a bulletproof coffee. However, when consumed late in the day, 
it stimulates our nervous system our body stops naturally being able to relax which then interrupts our sleep schedule studies have actually shown that if you consume caffeine six hours up until you sleep that it could actually worsen your quality of sleep caffeine can actually stay elevated in your blood up until six hours so drinking caffeine after three or four is actually not recommended now if you are one of those people that is not sensitive to caffeine and can literally down a cup of coffee right before bed then this may not be you i'm talking to but if you are sensitive to caffeine, then I recommend maybe switching over to a decaffeinated drink. The waters, the lemon waters. Number four is to establish a nighttime routine. So when I was learning how to sleep train my babies, I learned a lot about the importance of creating a routine for them, especially in the night, because it helps them fall asleep faster so that they can wake up less throughout the night and they're waking up the next day a lot more restful. So the same thing would apply for us as adults as well. In my life, I thrive on routines. I love having routines because it really takes the thinking out of things for me. I know what I'm expected to do and uh, I follow through with it. And so same thing when it comes to having a nighttime routine. So it's been proven that having a nighttime routine really helps improve your quality of rest. So things like listening to relaxing music, perhaps reading a story, listening to a podcast like what my husband and I are implementing into our routine, having a hot bath or a shower or even having a massage. I actually have a massager that I use every single night and I look forward to it because it really puts me in a relaxed state of mind. When it comes to my babies, I establish the same routine for them as well so that I am teaching them a set of patterns that they are expected every single evening leading up to uh, their bedtime so things like uh, giving them a bath or changing their diaper changing them pajamas dimming the lights reading them a book to help them fall asleep faster and be more rested and trust me I do not want a cranky baby the next day nor be exhausted so having a nighttime routine is key number five is to stop taking long naps throughout the day now I'm actually someone who doesn't like taking naps because it actually makes me feel a lot more tired and sleeper after it. But there are a lot of people where after a power nap, they end up feeling more recharged, refreshed, and studies have even shown that it actually improves brain function. My husband is actually one of those people who likes to take power naps on the daily. It helps him feel good afterwards so that he can do what he needs to do throughout the day. However, on the days he ends up falling asleep longer than he wants to, I really do notice it affecting his sleep pattern at night and he does have a harder time falling asleep faster. You end up tricking your internal clock that you're actually sleeping for the night. So the recommendation is that if you were to take a nap to keep it within the 20 minute or less mark, it doesn't affect your sleep schedule in the evening time. Number six is to incorporate exercise into your daily life, but to not exercise too late in the day. So I'm a huge proponent of exercise and I truly believe that it is the answer to a lot of life's problems but it's actually scientifically backed up that exercise helps to improve all aspects when it comes to our sleep quality including helping us with insomnia in one study it's actually been shown that in older adults it can help reduce the amount of time it takes to fall asleep by half although exercise is the key to a good night's rest it has shown that exercising too late in the day will have adverse effects this is because exercise creates a stimulatory effect which then increases alertness and a hormone and even adrenaline which makes it harder for us to fall asleep so if you are one of these people that are having trouble falling asleep, I recommend exercising, but maybe not too late in the day. Number seven is to optimize your room environment. Whether that be the pillow or the mattress that you're sleeping in, or your lights, or even the room temperature. All these factors play a part in your sleep quality. For example, when it comes to our pillow and our mattress, we make sure that we rotate our mattress every so often and also change over our pillow every one to two years. This is to ensure that alignment is at its best and we're not waking up with any aches and pains and that we are having the most restful sleep possible. When it comes to our lights, we like to dim our lights or even turn off our lights at night. 
And as I mentioned with screen time, my husband and I are trying not to, to fall asleep to the TV, but instead listening to something soothing and relaxing, such as a podcast, some music, or a motivational speech on YouTube. And lastly, when it comes to body temperature, I even discovered recently that one of the reasons why I was having trouble falling asleep was because the temperature in our house was at a very high temperature and I was having and I was tossing and turning at night. So all of these play a key in terms of having the most optimal sleep possible. And lastly, number eight is to take a melatonin supplement. Melatonin is the sleep hormone that tells your brain that it's time to go to bed. This is something that is newly incorporated into our household and that's because my husband, who actually travels quite often, was recommended this supplement as a way for your circadian rhythm to return to normal and the fastest way to return back to your old sleep patterns. Because of this, I actually did a lot of research and it actually has shown to be safe in the short term and also doesn't have any withdrawal effects. And with all that being said, it's very important to contact your healthcare practitioner to make sure it's safe for you. It's not the first thing that we, we turn to, but definitely something in our back pocket in the event that nothing else works. If sleep is something that you're suffering with, then do your research and make sure that you're, it is safe for you to take so that you can sleep better. Well, there you have it guys, my eight tips on how to sleep better in the evening time. Sleep is so important in our household, especially being a new mom. I really have to maximize the time that I do have when my babies go to sleep to really make sure that I get a good night's rest, however long it may be. It is vital for so many reasons and it makes up one third of our life. It's no wonder that everyone is always striving the best night's sleep possible. If you guys have any recommendations that I did not include in this video, please feel free to comment and leave it down here. I'm always searching for new ideas on ways to have the best night's rest. If you guys like this video, please, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell icon for weekly notifications on all things self-care. I can't wait to talk to you guys in my next video. As always, I'm super grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Hey,